Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this new tutorial, we are going to use the new input system to implement this simple 2D movement. So we'll be able to move left and right using the arrow keys. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see, this is what we left off from the previous video. We've created this simple level using the tile map system in Unity. So if you didn't watch the previous video, go ahead and check it out. It's very interesting. Now let's go ahead and add our player. Basically, we'll use an asset down here. I've already downloaded this free platform game assets from the asset store. The link is under the video description. Here you will find all of the things that you need to create your uh, 2D platformer game. Basically, we have this character folder. We are going to use a character from here. Basically, we'll use the animations. For example, we have the idle one. Let's go ahead and use it. So by default, our player is idle. And under here, you could use the blink animation, but I'm gonna use the default one. But if we drag this one under the inspector, and if we change the order in layer to four, you see all of these images. So first we need to slice these so that we can create the animation. And to do that, we need to change the sprite type, select the image, that contains all of the individual uh, sprites then let's go ahead and change the sprite mode to multiple then hit apply once you've done that we can open up the sprite editor to slice these so we can hit this uh, slice button I'm gonna leave everything as default then let's hit slice and let's hit apply now if we go back you will see down here we have all of the individual images for our idle animation so to create the animation and add the player to the scene we just need to drag all of these under the inspector uh, sorry the hierarchy so let's go ahead and drag all of these under the hierarchy and unity will create the animation I'm gonna put it under this animations folder then let's create a folder for our player using right click new then folder and let's call it player to make things organized I'm gonna give it a name so let's call it idle as well then let's hit save of course we need to change the order in layer to a CD player I'm gonna change it to a bigger number like 6 now we have our player and let's change the name to player as well and let's move it to this side and now if we hit play you see that we have our player and it's idle so now we need to move it using the new input system but first of all, we need to add uh, some kind of uh, rigid body component so that we can move our player using physics. So we just need to select the player and under the inspector, we can add the rigid body component using add component. Then let's search for rigid body and make sure to use the rigid body 2D. That's because this is a 2D game. So I'm gonna leave everything as default for now. Then if we hit play, our player will be affected by physics. And as you can see, he's falling down. So to fix that issue, we need to add some kind of colliders to the ground and the player as well, so that he can land on the top of the ground. And to do that, we can select the player. Then we can go down here and add a component. Just search for collider and you will have all of these options. You could use the capsule collider 2D, but I'm gonna use the circle one. And when we go to the scene view, you will see this green edge. That's the circle collider. Also, we need to add the collider to the ground. And in order to do that, we need to go under this grid. We've created this grass tile map. And down here, we can add the collider to this component. And it's going to add the collider to all of the tiles using add component. And just search for tile map. And you see here tile map collider 2D. If you click on it, you see these edges. That's the collider. Now, if we hit play, as you can see, our player is on the top of the ground, but we can't move now using the arrow keys. So we are going to implement the new input system. Then we are going to use it to move our player left and right. And to do that, first of all, we need to install the new input system. Basically, we can go to the package manager using window, then package manager. And let's search for input system. If you can't get it, you need to select from here Unity registry. Then let's search for input system and it's this package 
just select it then hit install to install it once the installation is finished unity will ask you to restart the editor so that we can enable the new input system just hit yes and make sure to save the changes in our scene and now we've successfully added the new input system we can close this window but how we could use it to move our player so in order to use the new input system first of all I'm gonna create a folder for our player scripts using right click create then folder and let's call it scripts and under this folder we are going to create our player movement script and so on also we need to create the input assets which is basically the different controls for our player and to do that we just need to right click create and let's go all the way down we have this input actions option we can give it a name like player controls then if we open it up using the double click you will see this window basically we will use it to add different inputs and as you can see it contains three sections the action maps actions and properties so don't worry we are going to cover these step by step so first of all we need to create an action map basically we use it to create different kind of controls for example we can create some kind of controls when the player is on the land or when the player is in the water so let's go ahead and create our first action map I'm gonna call it land you could create another one and you could call it water to create the controls when the player is under the water but I'm gonna get rid of it for now and once you create an action map you will see under this section the different actions for our action map so when the player is on the land he can move jump shoot and so on and we need to add these under this section for example we have this one by default we can give it a name like move in the next video we are going to add another action using this plus icon and we could call it jump but let's go ahead and get rid of it for now and each action needs to have some kind of inputs for example in order to move we could use the arrow keys and to specify that we need to add a binding for our action basically the binding is the trigger for the action so in order to move we need to use the arrow keys and to add a binding we can right click and we have here different options like add binding and also we have this one add 1d axis uh, composite basically we use this one for uh, 2d movement so let's go ahead and select it I'm gonna leave the name as default basically we could move right and left that's why we have these two options so we have the positive binding in order to move to the right we need to specify the right arrow and to do that we select this binding and from this path we can use the arrow just search for arrow and we have the option right arrow on the keyboard go ahead and select it and let's select a binding for the negative side so in order to move to the left we use the left arrow key you could search for it from here or you could listen then I'm gonna hit the left arrow key and as you can see it pops up from here I'm gonna select it now we could use this to move our player left and right but how we could read the inputs from this uh, player controls input actions and to do that we can generate a c-sharp script that is based on the settings that we have set from here just select this option generate c-sharp script and leave everything as default then hit apply and as you can see we have this player control script we could use it to check for the inputs for now we could only use the left and right arrow keys to move but you could add different kind of bindings for the same action so for example in order to move we could add another binding using uh, this plus icon and the same thing we use 1d axis we could call it 1d axis ad so we are going to use the ad keys to move left and right and the same thing we could select the positive key which is the d key so i'm gonna listen and let's hit the d key and for the negative one to move to the left let's listen and hit the A key and once you have done that we need to save the changes using this save asset or you could select it auto save so I will just hit the save assets and that's going to update the script as well now let's go ahead and create a player movement script under the scripts folder let's right click create C sharp script 
I'm gonna call it player movement. Then let's open it up in Visual Studio. So in order to use the new input system, first of all, we need to create an instance of the class that we have generated right now, and it's called player controls. So let's go ahead and create a player controls object. And let's call it controls. And then I'm gonna use the awake function to initialize it. So instead of using the start function, let's go ahead and use the awake one. It's like the start function, but it's called just right before. And under here, we can initialize this instance using controls equals new player controls. But that's not enough. We need to enable these controls using controls dot enable. And now we can check for the 1D axis. And to do that, we use controls, then the action map, which is land dot. And we have this move action. Basically, we can check if we have performed the move action by pressing the left and the right arrow keys using dot performed. And the syntax here is a little bit weird. We use plus equals. Then we have this context variable. You could call it whatever. So I'm going to call it CTX. So this object contains some information about the move action. For example, we can check if we are moving right or left. We use this variable. After that, we have this arrow which is equal sign than the greater sign. Then we need to add these curly braces and don't forget to add the semicolon as well. So all of the lines of code that we use over here is gonna be called once the move action is performed. So when we press the left or the right arrow keys, all of the lines of code down here is gonna be called. So we could use this section to move our player. And to do that, first of all, I'm gonna add another variable and it's gonna be the direction of our player using float and let's call it direction I'm gonna give it the default value 0 and under here we can update this direction variable using direction equals and we can get the direction using this context variable using ctx then dot read value basically it returns a float so let's explain this again so once the move action is performed all of the lines of code down here will be called for example, when we hit the right arrow, this context.readValue will return 1, and our direction will be 1 as well. And if we hit the left arrow, the context.readValue will return minus 1, and our direction will be minus 1. And if we release all of the keys, it's going to return 0, so our direction will be 0. Now we could use this variable to move our player, and we use that under the update method. So under the update method, we are going to use this direction value to move our player left or right. And to do that, we need to add a few uh, references. For example, we need to add a reference to the rigid body component. Let's declare public rigid body 2D and let's call it player RB. We are going to initialize that from the inspector. And down here, we can move the player using the player rigid body. And we change the velocity using dot velocity equals new vector 2. So we are going to move our player left and right by changing the x velocity and I'm gonna use direction multiplied by some kind of speed variable so I'm gonna declare it up here using public float and let's call it speed I'm gonna initialize it to 400 then we could use it down here to move our player by multiplying the direction by the speed and let's multiply it by the time to delta time to make it frame rate independent and for the y velocity, we are going to use the uh, same one using player rigid body dot velocity dot y. So we don't need to change the y velocity to move our player. We just need to change the x velocity. So when direction is one, this is going to be positive. So our player will move right. And if it's negative, he's going to move to the left. And if we release all of the keys, the direction variable will be zero. So our player will be stopped. And that's the easiest way to implement a 2D movement using the new input system. Let's go ahead and save our script. Then let's go back into Unity. So before I hit play, we need to change some properties of our move action. As you can see here, we have the properties window. Make sure to select the move action. And we need to change the action type from button to value or pass through. Basically, we use the button action when we have an action with one click. For example, when we jump, we just need to hit the spacebar button. In that case, we use the button action type. 
but if we have a continuous movement we need to use the value type also make sure to add some kind of interactions basically when we have a 2d movement we use press and release so in order to perform the move action make sure to select the press and release so whenever we press the arrow keys we need to move our player by changing the direction and also when we release it we need to stop it by changing the direction to zero that's why I have selected press and release I hope that makes sense then make sure to save the asset and don't forget to add the player movement script to our player so let's go ahead and drag it under here and let's change some properties you could change the speed also we need to add a reference to the rigid body which is this component so I'm gonna drag it under here and let's hit play and now I'm able to move left and right we just need to change few settings as you can see our player is rotating but at least we can move left and right so to fix that issue we need to stop the Z rotation and to fix that under the rigid body component we have some constraints we could freeze the Z rotation by checking this option now the problem will be fixed and now I'm able to move left and right using the left and right arrow keys or the AD keys so I think that's pretty much it guys for this video I decided to divide it into two parts so in the next part we are going to uh, switch between different animations depending on the state of the player if he's moving or not also we are going to flip it when we change the direction so if you didn't subscribe yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified with my videos and I will see you in the next one